ubiquitin, and Parkinson's disease. Ubiquitin, a small protein found in all eukaryotic cells, plays a central role in controlling the fate and activity of other proteins. Ubiquitin attaches to other proteins, tagging them for various outcomes within the cell. Like all proteins, ubiquitin is a linear sequence of amino acids. Ubiquitin is made up of 76 amino acids. Key residues include the methionine at position 1, 7 lysines, and the terminal glycine residue. Inside your body, the ubiquitin protein forms a distinct three-dimensional shape with methionine, lysines, and terminal glycine residues, all in defined positions. Ubiquitin attaches to the substrate via its terminal glycine residue. Attachment of one ubiquitin molecule to a substrate protein is known as monoubiquitination. Ubiquitin can also form chains on substrate proteins. A chain is formed when the terminal glycine of a second ubiquitin attaches to one of the methionine or lysine residues in the first ubiquitin. In this example, the terminal glycine of the second ubiquitin binds to the lysine in position 11 of the first ubiquitin. This forms a lysine 11-linked diubiquitin chain. For comparison, this is a methionine 1-linked diubiquitin chain. Ubiquitin can form longer chains, such as this tetraubiquitin, and can also form branches. Different ubiquitin chains are identified by their unique three-dimensional shape and electrostatic surface. Just a few examples are shown here. Ubiquitin tagging creates a molecular code that controls protein function, activity and disposal. For example, lysine 11 and lysine 48 linkages when attached to a protein signal that this protein is to be removed by proteasomal degradation. Other proteins recognise these specific ubiquitin tags and direct the proteins to the proteasome for destruction. Methionine-1 linkages are involved in immune signalling. Lysine-6 and 63-linked ubiquitin chains are involved in signalling by PINK1 and PARKIN. Both these proteins have been implicated in the development of Parkinson's disease, a destructive neurological condition of the brain. Parkin and PINK1 in Parkinson's disease. Mitochondria are compartments or organelles of cells that are key to providing the cell with energy. If mitochondria become damaged or dysfunctional, proteins on the mitochondrial outer membrane become tagged with ubiquitin. Decoration of mitochondria with ubiquitin signals for the organelle's destruction so that it can be replaced. Firstly, the protein PINK1 accumulates on the mitochondrial outer membrane. PINK1 attaches a phosphate group to ubiquitin in a process termed phosphorylation. This is the protein PARKIN, which functions to attach ubiquitin. Normally, PARKIN is found in an inactive form. Two subunits are important for PARKIN activation. UBL, or ubiquitin-like domain, and the RING2 domain. 
Harkin is activated in a two-step process. First, the UBL domain is dislodged after binding to phosphorylated ubiquitin. The UBL domain is then phosphorylated by PINK1. UBL finds a new binding position and dislodges Ring2 domain. This is the active form of Parkin. A carrier protein delivers ubiquitin to active Parkin. Active Parkin receives ubiquitin from the carrier protein via its Ring2 domain. Parkin transfers ubiquitin to accessible proteins on the mitochondrial outer membrane. Activated Parkin can conduct multiple rounds of ubiquitination. Parkin can also create ubiquitin chains, such as the lysine 63 linked diubiquitin shown here. The newly added ubiquitin attracts more parkin in a feed-forward mechanism. A heavily ubiquitinated mitochondrial surface signals its destruction. Disruption of this process is known to cause early onset Parkinson's disease. Scientists at WEHI are developing tools to better understand the Parkin ubiquitin mechanism with the hope of discovering new therapies for this devastating disease.